Good evening, it's another Wednesday night in the newsroom and you're just in time for 90 minutes of undiluted news, views and reviews treated with the extra touch of fine detail. Tonight, the Federal Executive Council sat and the outcome is a delight for ex-servicemen who retired from the Nigerian Army effective from 2017. Senate gives its position on the redesign of the Naira as the House of Representatives engages the National Emergency Management Agency on assistance to flood victims. The world awakens the consciousness of man to the virtues of tolerance. The roadmap to the villa is gathering pace as presidential candidates of different parties engage opinion leaders and leaders of organizations of roadmap to development. So talking elections, election security and logistics are also on the front burner as stakeholders identify hurdles that need to be scaled on the way to a good outing next year. Don't miss out on our offerings on the health from the loads of goodies associated with good sleep to the warming of children as a critical child survival intervention. The story of the intrepid female keke riders returns tonight just as more women get a lift from the UN and the federal government initiatives. In sports, the Super Eagles will face Portugal in a friendly tomorrow in Lisbon. The attention will, however, be on a certain Cristiano Ronaldo. We have these and many more on our lineup tonight. As we usually say, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. I am Fatima Mobuba, and this news is News Extra. You're welcome. As the festive season approaches, it is expected that the activities of the Federal Road Safety Commission will be on the increase towards the prevention of road accidents. In view of this, the Federal Executive Council at its meeting this Wednesday approved the request for additional operational vehicles. State House Correspondent Didi Unifide reports. Well, it is a time when activities on the nation's highway are on the increase and the Federal Executive Council uh, look for a way to further strengthen the Federal Road Safety Corps so that Nigerians will have safe journey. The mandate of the Federal Road Safety Corps is to prevent or minimize accidents on the highway, clear obstructions on any part of the highways, and educate drivers, motorists, and other members of the public generally on the proper use of the highways. And considering the fact that vehicular movement will be on the increase at this festive period, and to ease the pressure, this will put on the Commission, the Federal Executive Council, at its meeting, gave approval to the request of the Commission. Operational vehicles for the Federal Road Safety Corps. Total, 2 billion, 578 million, 948,164 Naira 36 Kobo only. Please note that the contracts were secured by locally based Manufacturers. And the Education Minister Damu Adamu speaks on what is happening in that sector. I had three memos which were passed, and all the three of them are contracts. The first one is for the National Examination Council, NECO, for the printing of sensitive and non sensitive materials, which was given to about, I think, eight contractors in the sum of 5,107,364,373 Naira 62 Kobo. The second one is a contract for the supply of 18 ambulances fitted with uh, medical equipment to 18 of our unity schools. We have more than 100 of them, so 18 we just decided to select three in each geopolitical zone. And the third one is a contract for the perimeter fencing of Usmanwood and Fodio University. The meeting was presided over by President Muhammad Ubari in the State House. Today, only for the news.
In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has approved more than 134.7 billion naira for the payment of security department allowance to all veterans who retired from the Nigerian Armed Forces with effect from 2017. The president who dropped this cherry news at the launch of the 2023 Armed Forces Remembrance Day Emblem Appeal Fund stressed the need for the nation to tap the enormous potential of the ex-servicemen for national development. State House Correspondent Adam Sambo reports. Apart from commemorating the nation's fallen heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice for the sake of humanity during the world and civil wars, as well as peace support operations, the launch of the Emblem Appeal Fund is also an opportunity to appreciate the troops still actively engaged in the daunting task of preserving national security. The federal government, President Buhari promised, will not relent in repositioning and strengthening all the nation's security agencies to enable them to surmount prevailing challenges and provide a conducive environment free from threats and criminality. I would like to reach it by earlier resolve to hand over a Nigeria at the end of my tenure that is free from insecurity to the next generation of leaders and with the gallantry and sacrifices exhibited by men and women of our armed forces in the campaign against insurgency, I am confident the nation will be returned to normalcy and will continue to battle decisively for the security challenges. Citizens, he however said, must refrain from detrimental acts and statements that threaten national unity and integration, but rather engage in those that unite the country. The president who reiterated government's commitment to the welfare of the nation's veterans made a case for business enterprises to support the service personnel in form of discounts and rebates upon purchases and services rendered. The emblem remains a symbol of remembrance and a beacon of hope for a peaceful future with the unspoken message to our fallen heroes that their sacrifice is noble and the greater good of our father man. By burning the emblem is one way we can identify with this sacrifice. I therefore wish to implore our students to procure the emblems and wear them with pride as a sign of patriotism and support for the armed forces. The president announced a 10 million naira donation to the Nigerian Legion on behalf of the federal government while pledges were made by the National Assembly, the armed forces, the police and other security services. For Senate President Ahmed Lawan, the resolve by President Muhammad Buhari to hand over a well-secured Nigeria to the next administration is a collective responsibility by all. And the best and only and most logical thing to do for us in the National Assembly is to also participate in that enterprise of ensuring that we provide resources for the armed forces and other security agencies to continue to fight the insecurity that we face. And, and it's, it's something that is doable. It's a matter of determination. And I'm taking this uh, opportunity here to appeal to all Nigerians that we must at all times uh, support our armed forces. During the event, government agencies at both federal and state levels as well as the defense and services headquarters have been encouraged to interface with and patronize the veterans on matters of security, intelligence and strategy. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And this next story is all about giving back to the host community. At the mention of the Nigerian military, what readily comes to your mind is the regimentation, probably the classes of their uniform, or perhaps the display of firepower when duty calls. Then there is another side of this indispensable custodians of security that depicts social responsibility that we are about to tell you. So good times are here for Kaoji community, Bagudu local government area in Kebbi state. This is
because a 1.4 kilometer road among other amenities have just been inaugurated by the chief of army staff lieutenant general farouk yahya let's now join ibrahim nanghamid for details this road remained in total dilapidation and prone to erosion which caused severe hardship to the locals until the intervention by the nigerian army courtesy of directorate of the civil military affairs primarily to promote interface between the military and the civil populace. The Nigerian Army was commissioned to leave our men on 15 November 2022 with With the symbolic inauguration of the facility, the locals can now drive their vehicles and walk comfortably on both sides. The Nigerian Army had isolated long ago belonged to Nigerians. That's why it's called Nigerian Army. It's Army for Nigerians. And therefore, it has been carrying out a number of quick impact projects in several communities across the country in an effort to strengthen our relationship with our people. This was in order to open access to hitherto difficult areas and improve economic activities and livelihood of the surrounding villages. This is coming as the 22nd Chief of Army Staff. This part of of Nigeria, especially the Northwest Zone, has seen the letting peace. This is because of these initiatives. In Kaoje, Bagudo local government, Kebi State, Ibrahim Bahamidu, NT News. Let's head to Lagos now, where apart from the leverage that Nigerian Navy is increasing assets and capacity, is contributing to global efforts in securing the Gulf of Guinea. Its proven territorial knowledge of the international waters is also a huge asset. French defense attaché to Nigeria, Colonel Guillaume Doyon, stated this ahead of the launch of a joint sea exercise between a French naval ship, helicopter landing dock, Tonnery, and the Nigerian Navy in Lagos. And Adini Tayo has that. The arrival of helicopter landing dock Tonori at the jetty of the Western Naval Command after about a month and a half at sea is sequel to a symposium held earlier in Paris where the French naval ship informed Chief of the Naval Staff Vice Admiral Awal Gambo of its willingness for a joint sea exercise and more strategic cooperation with the Nigerian Navy. While noting that there is no border between French and Nigerian coast except for water, French defense attaché to Nigeria reiterates the need for partnership considering the threats posed by piracy and drug trafficking to their mutual interests. Nigeria being one of the main stakeholders in the, in the region and I'm convinced that the exercise, the amphibious exercise, will also help to develop this, uh, this capability. We need to be here to um, gather knowledge of uh, this region we do not know very well and um, if we want to ensure security at sea we have to know each other to train together the flag officer commanding western river command rear admiral jacobo rambai who applauded existing fruitful partnership between the two navies said the planned joint sea exercise is coming at a time when recently acquired landing ship tank and an escada is set for its maiden amphibious exercises we have to train the way we want to fight and the two navies are coming together to be able to actualize that aspect of training the way you want to fight both nigerian and french navies were recently involved in exercise grand african nemo a brainchild of france in lagos adini itaiwo nc news so legislative matters now the redesigning of the naira notes will not only check corruption and counterfeiting but will also curtail the activities of bandits and kidnappers national assembly correspondent ignatius Unkwa reports that this is coming from the senate as it reconveyed after four weeks of recess the senate had on wednesday 12th of october 2022 suspended plenary to enable standing committees scrutinize the 2023 budgets of ministries departments and agencies of government four weeks after the legislators are back to their temporary chamber. The issue of redesigning the Naira note is submitted on the floor following a motion by the chairman, Senate Committee on Banking and Finance, Senator Obasani. There is a need for Nigerians to comply with the time frame concerning the importance of the process to the economy. We 
the CBN should really now go on to very serious enlightenment because there could be some people in some rural areas who might not even be aware of these policies. American dollar is everywhere in the world. It is being forged everywhere. It is being used everywhere in the world. It doesn't make them to change their currency. But I think we need to look deeper into these issues, the economic implications of it. Is it going to help Nigeria in any way? One month and a half is extremely short for what we're about to do. If you withdraw one trillion from this economy at once in a month the ripple effect will affect everybody that the central bank should go as, as, as far as april ended i don't believe in one year or two years mandate the committee on banking insurance and other financial institutions to embark on an aggressive oversight to ensure that nigerians are adequately protected senate through a motion by Senator Gershon Basi, advised that 500 billion naira from the 2023 service-wide votes be provided for the Federal Road Maintenance Agency for the rehabilitation of roads destroyed by the recent flood, while the NNPC Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme be extended to cover maintenance of failed sections of federal roads. Senators Alim Dume and Mohamed Bomoy drew the attention of the Senate to what they described as uneven disbursement of half a trillion naira loan to the six geopolitical zones by Nigeria's Development Bank. Senator Sani Musa was appointed chairman of the ad hoc committee that will investigate the matter. Urge the bank to expand its loan facilities beyond five sectors already captured. Senate stepped down the consideration of the report of its other committee on oil theft after three members of the committee disowned the report. Visiting legislators from the French Parliament were in the temporary chamber to observe Senate plenary. Senate observed the minute silence in honor of the former clerk of the Senate, Nelson Ayuro, who died last week. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo. In the meantime, the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Abdul Hamid Dembos, is assuring the Senate Committee on public accounts that NTA Kalaba will be a model in the country when the reconstruction of the station destroyed by hoodlums during NSAT's protests is completed. The DG was represented at the investigative hearing by Executive Director Engineering, National Assembly Correspondent Dayo Wunshola has that. Committee of the Senate is mandated to investigate the application of finances of federal government by ministries, departments, and agencies. Appearing here is a team from NTA invited to speak on allocations of service web votes for the year 2018 and 2021. Having provided explanations and documents concerning the 2018 allocation, NTA DG's representative speaks on the expected impact of the 2021 allocation dedicated to bring back to life the looted NTA Calabar. So I'm happy to report today that the equipment we want to acquire for NTA Calabar will be the first of its kind in the history of Nigeria. Why is this so? In other places we have put digital studio equipment in terms of content creation. The death of Calabar will be content creation and as well content delivery. For the first one of 2018, we have seen the sale of presentation, particularly the programming process. But we have seen a letter published by the approval by the president. So the program is good. All right, you. you are discharged and acquitted. Discharged and acquitted. The committee sanded a note of warning uh, to other agencies yet to appear, and it will not be business as usual. From the National Assembly, Dayo Gunsola, NTA News. Staying with the National Assembly, efforts are ongoing to ensure that all flood impacted communities and victims are provided with the needed support. This was at uh, this was the assurance of the Director General of the National Emergency Management Agency when some lawmakers expressed dissatisfaction over the distribution of relief materials to victims of the 2022 flood. National Assembly correspondent 
Let me alley report. The name DG is appearing before the House Committee on Ecological Fund as it engages stakeholders on the utilization of the funds. The committee feels that monies received by stakeholders have over the years been applied to responding rather than preventing disasters, the consequence of which is the impact of the 2022 flood. The intervention program at the presidency is just 1%. Out of this 1%, four agencies are still taking money from it. But the ones for the local government and out of the state, nobody is sharing it with them. Some members of the committee are also concerned about the mode of distribution of relief materials to victims. I'm from Edo. I have 33, 33 communities taking over. Are we not supposed to know and to be on ground with you there when you go? As both people coming from the federal. The DG member explained that the agency adopted multifaceted approach for effective assistance. We use the Nigerian Navy to go for rescue mission to go and save lives. We use the Nigerian Air Force to drop, uh, drop food items. I also have pictures if the committee wants I can show you evidences of all this state by state. A representative of the Nigeria Governors Forum RC hearing pledged a close working relationship with the committee from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. Nigeria is building collaborations with potential investors to ramp finance for the implementation of the nation's energy transition plan at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Egypt. On Ingefine Face reports. Nigeria is the first country in Africa to develop a detailed energy transition plan. Accordingly, an energy transition working group was set up, chaired by the vice president and supported by an energy transition office to tackle the dual crisis of energy poverty and climate change. The plan details pathways for significant low carbon development of energy systems across five key sectors of power, cooking, transport, industry, and oil and gas, highlighting the role of natural gas as a transition fuel on the path to net zero. The people from the private sector themselves to market it to the global community. So, so far, we've been able to pitch uh, to the global community to market the transition plan to attract funding to support the initiative. So we're hoping to communicate to the global community that we are a country of action and that the projects we have are valid, they can be made bankable if they're not bankable already, and that we can really join hands to make that those commitments from the international community to support the developing economies as well as Nigeria with that hundred billion that has been saved. To be able to sign between three to five agreements with original equipment manufacturers for the gas as well as for the other uh, energy infrastructure. At COP27, Nigeria is exploring investment opportunities to kickstart the implementation of the energy transition plan. The plan reflects a vision for Nigeria to kind of industrialize right through low carbon technologies in channel shake egypt and fine face and news back home the african development bank president dr akio miadishina has emphasized that the right of african countries to use their natural gas reserves should be reflected in any deal at the cop 27 climate talks even as some nations push to see fuel use curtailed just in them only reports we can save ourselves Dollar for dollar, each dollar spent in renewable energy creates three times as many jobs as dollars spent in fossil energy. Agreeing a deal on fossil fuels is a key sticking point at the COP27 talks. Reports have indicated that some countries, including India, are keen to phase down the use of such fuels, including gas. But the AFDB president says natural gas is needed to balance the energy supply, given the intermittent nature of renewables in Africa. The world is currently on course to meet its climate goal of limiting to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial average by mid-century. 
Because of that, one focus at the conference has been on countries to accelerate their shift to renewable energy. And Dr. Adeshina says the special nature of Africa with the highest level of energy poverty in the world has to be recognized. When it comes to the issue of gas, the African Development Bank, we are the leader on this continent on renewable energy. We are putting 85% of our resources into renewable energy generation. But I recognize that renewables are very highly variable in terms of supply. So you got to make sure you have a balanced energy grid. In the meantime, fossil fuels have not been included in a first bare bones document listing all possible elements of the COP27 UN Climate Summit cover decision to be adopted at the end of the conference. Justin Bemuni continues. Let's take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking politics. Great to have you back. It's all about politics now. Well, just the capital of Plateau State played host to members and supporters of the All Progressives Congress as the party formally flagged off its 2023 Tinubu Tima presidential campaign. Chairman of the Campaign Council and Pres President Muhammad Buhari led others to make commitment and solicit support for the election of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the next president of Nigeria. Salihu Gwanara has that. Members of the progressive family of the podium again for a face-to-face -face interaction with the electorate. This is the political bond that existed since 2013 and those that remain faithful with the progressive ideology are here to help the party retain power at the top in next year's election. To hit the ground running with just township stadium as the stepping stone, President Muhammad Buhari again handed over the party's flag to Bola Ahmed Tinubu after he did seem at the end of the June 8, 2022 presidential primary. Ahmed Bola Tinubu is going to represent us in the next year of the election. We only come here to show our women's support for him. And we are going to take them to him throughout this country. And we shall ask, which is all of our members of this party, the best of luck in the next year of the APC stalwarts, including the party's presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Tinubu, reaffirmed commitment to good governance for national development if the party is given the presidential mandate come 2023. We, the APC, I need Tinubu and Shetima. We shall allow. We see to make permanent a covenant of progressive good governance with Nigeria under this hope, resurgence, and hope renewed. Renewed! Because you are supporting us. The party flag is a symbol of the party authority. It is also the banner that unites its leaders and members in the common cause of electoral victory and good governance in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Today, we also formally flag off the 2023 presidential campaign and by extension, the campaigns for all the elective offices up for contest next year 2023 the governorship election or the election of a village council mr president you are a hero of infrastructure development in nigeria our next president will build on that you are constructing roads all over the country dams all over the country seaports and so on and so forth our next president will continue with those good jobs that you have started. Some will be completed for you to commission before you leave. Members of the progressive family collectively assured to be ambassadors of the progressive government and ensure continuity that will sustain the delivery of basic dividends of democracy to Nigeria beyond 2023. 
Salio Guanara, NTA News. Well, thank you so much, Salih, for that. Well, joining us now in the studio is the Director of Public Affairs and the Chief Spokesperson for APC Presidential Campaign Council and Minister of, of State for Labor and Employment, Festus Kiamo, SEN. It's good to have you on News Extra. Thank you so much. Well, should I say welcome back from Joss? <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. Uh, you can see now I'm full of smiles mm -hmm. with what you just said and just that mm -hmm. happened. We have seen it, everybody has seen it that you flagged off your campaign officially. Now what's next? Or what do what should we expect? Is it the usual crossfire between uh political parties or what? What should we expect? Well with what you saw in Joss, um, I'm sure everybody now understands why we took our time, you know, to hit the road. Um I explained this, you know, earlier in different fora that uh, ours was like a 50-ton trailer that was about to be maneuvered onto the highway. And so we had to make sure the brakes were working, the hydraulics and everything was in order. And with what you saw there in just yesterday, um, I think I can confidently tell you that the game is almost over. Uh, because you saw a party yesterday that was united from top to bottom. A party from the from the president to the national chairman to the candidates to all the governors all our 22 governors were present past governors co-aspirants ministers the party structure at every level you see the synergy between the national um, executive committee the national working committee the, the the pcc there was there is there was no single whimper whimper of disaffection within the structure of the party from top to bottom so you have a united party you didn't have five governors boycotting the event like you have in other parties you didn't have one governor singing there uh, as if they pay the, the switch or somewhere you have well, no it, such well, thing well, it's a united it, it, strong party that launched its campaign yesterday and so going forward you expect us to dwell on the issues. We are not going to pay heed to all these side attractions, side distractions and all that. We want to tell the Nigerian people what we have in store for them. Those who don't have anything to say, they are the ones who are distracting Nigerians. Instead of promoting their candidates, they are all dwelling in inaccuracies and fallacies and scandals. We are not doing all that. So, what next? What next? Is that we are going to roll from town to town, city to city, state to state. We are hitting Imbo tomorrow. Will be my state Delta. I can't wait on <laughs> Saturday to welcome. So is it that you have a tentative calendar for this nationwide campaign? Yes, we do. We do. We have released our calendar, so we can we can plan reasonably. You know, we can we can do some reasonable plan ahead of time. So everybody will you know know exactly how the campaign train um, is rolling. Well, well, we we have seen yes. Like you said, you've started, you have, uh, you guys ruled out your documents and all of that. So, campaign promises is one thing. And, you know, getting you know, the concept to, you know, to actualize what you have promised is another thing. So, I would use your words, or will I say the words of your documents, that uh, renewed hope. You talked about renewed hope. So, why should Nigerians have that renewed hope? Let me explain this thoroughly to Nigerians that, you know, they, I think they, are, they don't understand the concept of renewed hope. That is why. The I critics have question. said, why are we renewing hope? So, there is hopelessness now. Well, does it not mean it's, it's not, doesn't, uh, uh, we, are, we are transiting from one APC. We are supposed to transit from one APC to another APC. And so, why are you renewing hope? And that means we are perhaps suggesting that there is hopelessness. Now, but let me tell you this. It is like a marriage between couple. You can see that after 10 years of marriage, it doesn't mean that maybe you have a quarrel or anything happening, but at times they go back to the registry to renew their vows. So people should see it in that context. They say, renew all of vows. So, for example, we had the APC who came up that came on board in 2015. At a point, and people think at times we are joking when we say so, but go and look at the numbers. At a point where the country was nose diving, because we had a GDP that was on a free fall from 6.5 to about 2.5 at the time they handed over. And a minister of a minister of, um, of, of, of finance of the same PDP that predicted that the country was headed for the bottom of the rock. So now 
There was no hope at that time. President Muhammad Mubarak came, came and snatched the country from the precipice of disaster and began to roll back you know, the country from disaster. So there was hope at that time. So this hope that we have carried from Buhari, Buhari time to this time, what Ashiwaju is saying is that it's just like couples are going back to the registry. They are going to renew their vows. We are going to renew that hope. The hope that Buhari gave to us. We want to tell Nigerians that that hope is still alive. That hope is not going to come down. It's not going to recede. It's a renewal of vows with the Nigerian people. Well, you know, we can't talk about campaigns. We can't talk about elections. We are talking about Nigerian youths because we are large, I would say. So uh, there's a lot of clamor, you know, for, for from the youths. What do you have for the youths that is special? Of all the candidates on parade, especially the so-called leading candidates, I just want you, and I want Nigerians listening to me in all honesty, mm -hmm. to look back at the last 23 years of our democracy. And I beg them to look at this. And look at those youths in government that has, they have grown from the, the youth in government to the men now in government, those who were nurtured, those who were given responsibility at a very early age, people who, were, who didn't have God for this, who were not coming from prominent families, who were youths picked for their brilliance, for their talents, and picked and given huge responsibilities. And today, they have risen you know, up the echelon of government. Who provided all those youths? Who gave them the opportunity? It's Asiraju. Okay. And I, you don't want well, to mention the name. No, I don't want to. Uh -huh. yes, because we, 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 the names are there. Those who well, have been made, who have it, grown from, from it, children to men in government. Okay, they it's all nurtured by Asiraju. Right. Bella right. So now so you I've, are you to I've know you. I've heard you, sir. that there's nobody yes. that can give them that chance except Asiraju. Okay, there's, you know, we, we had about the reports, you know, and, on the shoving and uh, you know, the shoving at the protest at the venue. Yes, the law for the candidates. So, it's all this. Uh, the law so, for the candidates. It's the law. It's all this. Uh, no opposition. They were trying to turn it around. What happened okay. was that there was a surging crowd. In some part, it happened for just three minutes. There was a surging just crowd in a part oh. of. Yes, yeah, just for three minutes. Okay. The surging part is a part of the crowd. They wanted to sit the candidate. They wanted to see President Buhari. When President Buhari came into the venue, it was pandemonium. Everybody was shouting, say, Baba. Well, he, he still has that panache. Oh, he yeah. still has that All right. Thank you so much. You remember, Thank let me just tell you. So you, you can well, say it was in 2019. Remember, it was only that venue that President Buhari could not speak in 2019 because the crowd was so much. And they ferried him away because he just moved to the crowd All in right. 2019. Okay, thank you so much. So, I know we have a whole lot to talk about yes. but because this yes. is like a news program. We yeah. don't have much time to talk more. Well, thank you so much for coming on News Extra. Thank you. Yes, that was the Director of Public Affairs uh, and um, the spokesperson, the chief spokesperson of, of, of for APC Presidential Campaign Council, none other but Festus Kiamo, S-E-N. Well, moving on, we're well, still talking about pol politics. Well, it was less than 24 hours after the flag off of the APC Presidential Campaign at uh, in Joss, the presidential candidate of all progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is reaffirming his commitment to the One Nigeria project. He said that this during the inauguration of a Boeing State Governor's Lodge located at Asoko Abuja. Here is Abakar Akwanga with the details. The convergence of these eminent Nigerians of APC extraction is to perform the single tax of celebrating a giant's pride by progressive but pond a solidarity rally. Asiwaju, flanked by Speaker Bajabi Amila, serving a past governors and members of the National Assembly, declared the project ready for use. <laughs> At a state reception in honor of the APC presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu reassured Nigerians of better days ahead on the platform of the APC. I am the APC stop. APC will be very progressive and we will continue to pray my name. The people of South East, we have food. I'm not the chairman of South Africa for us for the people of the We know where it will be better for us in 2020. And that is it. 
the APC leaders at different levels of the party hierarchy in Tehran to support for Tinubu, saying Nigeria will be more secured, prosperous, and united under Tinubu's mandate in Abuja, Abubakar Akwanga, NTN News. Meanwhile, presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Asuaju Bala Habit Tinubu, has assured the leadership of the Christian Association of Nigeria that he will not run his administration on the by, on the basis of religion if elected president of Nigeria. Tinubu, who met with the Khan leadership in Abuja on Wednesday at an interactive session, assured them that the same way his administration did not discriminate against anyone, either based on tribe, religion or gender, when he was Lagos State Governor, he would not start such in office as president. He was accompanied to this session by his wife, Senator Umuremi Tinubu, presidential running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima, House of Representatives Speaker Femi Bajabia Mila, Governors Hope Uzadima in New State, David Umahi Abwani, Abdullahi Ganduja Kano, Abdurrahman Abdurraza Akwara, Deputy Senate Leader, uh, Senator uh, Benefaz Ajayim, Senate Chief Whip, Senator Oji Uzakalu, these are special duties, uh, Senator George Akume and other political associates. The leadership of Akan under new President Daniel Uko presented a charter of demands and issues to the APC presidential candidate. They demanded, among others, state police or a decentralized police system, devolution or revolution of power to state, equal rights for all religions and their adherents. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party and former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abakar, says his agenda for restructuring is to ensure that the government becomes more efficient, media advisor to the PDP presidential candidate, Paul Ibe, in a statement disclosed that he made the remark at the 24th lecture series of the Lagos Business School. He added that Atiku would encourage the National Assembly and State Houses of Assembly to come up with constitutional amendments that will give more powers and resources to state and local governments. The private sector, the statement for the emphasized, should be given the opportunity to play more roles in the economy, recalling that as Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, between 1999 to 2007, Atiku headed the economic team that implemented fundamental economic reforms, including the design and implementation of a private sector revival strategy. The PDP presidential candidate noted that the five-point agenda of his policy proposal is a document that contains the solution to the many challenges besetting the country. Still talking politics now, the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Senator Iyotia Ayu, says the party is set to coast to victory in the 2023 general elections and calls for unity of purpose among members towards attaining the collective goal. Timothy Yusuf reports that the chairman stated this while receiving reports of the Special Reconciliation Committee for Ocean and Lagos State Chapters. The Special Reconciliation Committee, chaired by Yitayo Jigede SEN, was mandated by the PDP National Working Committee to reconcile and bring together various factions of the party under one umbrella. Ocean factions of the party are already reconciled before the last governorship election in the state. The assignment here is submission of the committee's report on Lagos State. Chairman of the committee, Yitayo Jigede SEN, revealed that the Lagos chapter is now better united than before. PDP National Chairman Yucha Ayu emphasized that when the leadership of the party at every level is united, the party has better chances of winning. We have a government in Lagos and several of us were 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 in Lagos. PDP will continue to work assiduously towards ensuring peace, unity and stability ahead of the forthcoming elections, the members assured. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. 
And from Kaduna, we hear that the Inter-Party Advisory Council in the state has inaugurated various committees to work in harmony with the Independent National Electoral Commission and the security operatives towards free fair and credible forthcoming elections. This was at a special general assembly of political party chairman and governorship candidates held in Kaduna. Haruna Mohammed has the report. Committees that up include monitoring and restoration committee and the governorship and candidate so. forum. The meeting of the Inter-Party Advisory Council with governorship candidates and chairman of various political parties in Kaduna State discussed issues which will promote unity and an issue-based campaign. Governorship candidates present in the meeting agreed to uphold the sanctity of peace and stability in the state. While calling for respect among themselves, they appealed for a level playing field. When our supporters and the electorate lose their lives in the process of electioneering, it is not to the benefit of society. What we have done certainly is to give heat to that resolution, to that intention, to that outing for a very credible and transparent election as there would surely be life after uh, the elections so what we want is for people to be alive to celebrate the outcome of those elections uh, we urge and employ all parties to show more restraint in their campaigns the chief chairman of the council mikhail abubakar stressed the need for candidates to avoid overheating the system if followers they are your followers if you call them on out in order I don't think there will be violence in this election. The meeting ended with commitment by participants to support the ongoing efforts to ensure free, fair and credible elections. In Kaduna, I am Haruna Mohammed, NT News. From Kaduna, we take you to Yobe, where the State Police Command is intensifying engagement with political parties and other key players to forestall breach of law and order, as well as ensure that the electorates do not get disenfranchised during the forthcoming elections. Let's get more details from Adam Yusuf. Attendance at the meeting are security agencies, representatives of political parties and other critical stakeholders, brainstorming ideas to reach toward ensuring free 2023 electioneering campaigns in Yobe State. The convener of the meeting and Yobe State Commissioner of Police Haruna Gerba, while ensuring neutrality and commitment of security agencies in enforcing law and order during the entire process, asked political parties to warn their supporters against use of provocative words and bearing of arms. But as citizens of this state, we have a duty and responsibility to be getting used to foment trouble and find member of violence and disunity in the state. The OBC resident electoral commissioner Abad Chabuka represented stated that electoral empire is closely monitoring activities of all political parties in the state and urged them to do their politicking in line with electoral laws. In their separate presentations, stakeholders call for a level playing ground and protection for all political parties and their candidates before and during the elections to ensure free, credible and peaceful exercise. In the matter, Adam Yusuf, NTA News. The democratic journey for the transition of power Another set of leaders in Nigeria in 2023 has begun with the electionarian processes. But the events and narratives trailing the campaigns so far are not too palatable, following reported cases of attacks at venues of campaign rallies. But what do the rules guiding the protection during rallies say in the Electoral Act 2022? Austin Aibe gives us an update. Indeed, in this rural campaigns by political parties vying for positions in government have taken off with them marketing their candidates to voters across the country within the electoral guidelines as provided for in the Electoral Act 2022 as amended. If the sad commentaries coming from venues or campaign rallies are anything to go by, then political parties and their supporters, as well as key stakeholders in the electoral process, need to do more. As the people, we will allow for hoodlums to hijack the process. Then, then, when one has to be worried about the act, as legal practitioners point to gaps which negate some provisions in the act. Section 91 is of the, elect of the new electoral act. Say 
that a commissioner of police in every state in Nigeria must provide adequate security in all political campaign rallies procession for all political parties and may be assisted by the any other security agency. The attacks have been condemned by many institutions and political analysts with the Independent National Electoral Commission INEX, 50 of such cases in 21 states of the Federation have been recorded so far, warning that the trend, if not curtailed, pertains serious threat to the 2023 general elections. If we don't deter it at this point of campaign, then we'll be emboldening those who are engaging in it to take it to the point of pulling, which might not pertain something good and well for us as a country. Of course, not only at campaign rallies, at any in your residence, in, in, in the schools, on, on the roads, wherever you might be, you are entitled to that protection and a breach of that protection is not acceptable under any circumstance. The incidents in so far arrests have been made, investigations have been conducted, and some subjects have been made charged to court. Whichever party, including the party of the president, for as long as you decide to scuttle the electoral process, the law enforcement agencies will equally be uninhibited in reacting to whatever actions you have taken. Why acknowledging the fact that INEC and security agencies are doing their best, they frown at some decisions by state governors and approvers of campaign venues and erection of big boards, which they say is not only unhealthy for the electoral process but also overheating the polity. They still re echo the need for the establishment of an election offenses tribunal to help in prosecution of offenders. Now there are political parties are going on out for campaign rallies. These commissioners will send out their officers to be there to monitor what they are doing. Commentators have said that to stem the tide, we have raised the need for security agencies to move swiftly to apprehend perpetrators of violent attacks, prosecute them as required by law, and reinforce security around venues of campaign rallies. In Abuja, Austin and Yebe, NT News. Well, thanks so much, Austin, for the insights. Now, former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshomale, has identified character and trust as the fulcrum of leadership. Adams Oshomale made the assertion in Port Harcourt at the inauguration of the eighth flyover bridge constructed by the River State Government. Ogedi Mwekwere reports. The inauguration of the eight flyover bridge described as unique owing to the fact that the bridge is sited in the governor's country home. As expected, his kit and king rolled out the drums in appreciation for the milestone recorded and the various awards in his show. The visibly happy governor believes that the essence of politics is to also attract development skilled for a progressive Nigeria where everyone will have equal opportunity irrespective of tribe or religion. What you require in this country today is about United Nigeria. It's how all of us can see ourselves as one. It's how all of us can see ourselves as our brothers uh, keep us. Former governor of Edo State, Adams Oshomole, acknowledged that Governor Wike has transformed River State in such a way that his critics will agree that he has made a difference. How can a country be governed by people who cannot be trusted? When politicians make statements, make promises, or even make agreements, or even uh, enact laws, that the laws are not to be obeyed by themselves, they are to be obeyed by others. The eight flyover bridge, no doubt, will enhance the vehicular movement and reduce travel time spent on the road, as well as increase social economic activities in the area and ease of doing business. In Port Harcourt, Bogey Dimitri, and St. Louis. Rehabilitated parts of the flood damaged sections of East West Road is now open to motorists as work reaches Patani Axis in Delta State. Osanachi Abraham gives us a situation report. The East West Road is becoming busier with the opening of numerous 
Bayasa and now Patani Aziz in Delta State. This is part of efforts by the federal government and the NDDC to ameliorate the suffering of commuters and enable businessmen and women return to their businesses. I'm just happy to see this because a lot of people suffer through this flow. Just including me, yes, this man and everything. So seeing this, it's really encouraging. Uh, we will engage in order to make this road motorable the fastest possible way for normal movement to resume and for people to resume in doing their businesses. And I believe we have succeeded in doing so so far. Although the assignment given to the contractor by the NDDC is to make the affected sections motorable to commuters flying the East West Road, some road users say there is need to build bridges and set up lasting measures to avoid future occurrence. <laughs> The decision of the federal government through the Niger Delta Development Commission to make the East West Road motorable has no doubt impacted positively on the social and economic activities of people doing businesses along the East West Road, even as they expect more support from the federal government. From Patani in Delta State, Osinachi Abraham, NTA News. And Nigerians have again been reminded to emulate the great legacies of the country's first president, late Dr. Mamdi Azikiwe, as guiding principles to achieving the dreams and aspirations of becoming a one big united and prosperous nation. This was at the third Zix Annual Merit Award Lecture 2022, organized by Igbo Unsuka United Front. Kenasinani reports. <laughs> It was a defining moment for the speaker who took turns to energize the late Dr. Namdazikiwe for all that he stood for in realizing Nigeria's independence. I hope we will take the cue on how a nationalist patriot great leader is produced, his character, his learning, his dedication and his foresight. The Anwar Bill Award Lecture Series is therefore designed specifically to promote Nigeria integration, peace and unity of Nigeria through that. Discussions on the theme Nigeria of our dreams, possibilities, challenges, and realities evoked nostalgic feelings amongst the ethnic, re echoing that voice of wisdom, admonishing everyone to take on the responsibility of nation building, as exemplified by late Dr. Azikiwe, a great leader who would have been 108 today. What we should now do towards 2023 is that spirit of common brotherhood. We should eschew violence. We should think of Nigeria as a second treasure given to us. If our leaders can emulate Zik, especially at this time, we can restore unity to Nigeria. Led Dr. Azikiwe's wife, a professor emeritus, Uchi Azikiwe, is optimistic that Nigeria's continuous existence as one indivisible nation will give peace to the soul of her husband. I know how to pressure Nigeria. He will say, whatever that will make Nigeria disintegrate, God forbid. It was an opportunity to honor some distinguished Nigerians in various spheres of endeavor. Projecting Nigeria as a one united nation where every citizen is given equal opportunity to contribute meaningfully to the growth and development of the nation, reflecting on the idea of peace, unity, and progress of the nation, for which Dr. Nambasiki will live and die for, is one major point to underscore at this event. In other news, a troop 
200 level science laboratory technology student of the Ekiti State University, Ibrahim Akindele, has won a three bedroom flat prize in the Glow Festival of Joy promo. Grace Ayanleke will tell us all about it. <laughs> of earning a reward can only be better explained by its recipient with the understanding that shelter is one of the essential needs of man. Globalcom included 20 houses in its 2022 Global Festival of Joy promo with the first winner, 19-year-old Ibrahim Akindele. I was not really putting my mind up to it like real Nigerians won't like normally if you put in a code you don't really expect much but i was in this belief when this happened because it was like the least i could expect when you plan okay general keyboard house oh, that's big when he called me that mommy i own a house i say what do you mean of four people he say yes i can express my feeling as far as rewarding loyalty of subscribers the promo they say is to move their customers from poverty to prosperity to encourage new subscribers to be on our network. No telecom in the whole of Nigeria has ever given out a house as a gift. So Globalcom being a pay setter for others to the first that is doing this across the country. This is what is expected of more indigenous corporate bodies and um, companies. So uh, we are happy with these developments and anything government can do to support we will. With 20 houses, 24 cars, 100 power generating sets, 200 sewing machines, and 1,000 rechargeable fans up for grabs. The promo is open to all boys and data subscribers by dialing the code star 611 hash and recharging a minimum of 500 naira weekly in Ibado. Grace Ayole K, NTA News. Let's say congratulations, Ibrahim. Her business is next after this timeout. Please stay. Welcome back and next is business news and we have Musa Abakar with that. Musa. Thank you, Fatima. The Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is accelerating the approval of the Nigerian automotive policy in a bid to fast track gradual transition from the importation of used cars to the manufacture and distribution of new vehicles. To this end, the ministry is engaging with Volkswagen as part of a follow up process to the Memorandum of Understanding, which Nigeria signed with the company in 2018. Volkswagen made an undertaking to implement phase approach in relation to the assembly of vehicles initially from assembly kits with the long-term view of establishing Nigeria as an automotive hub on the west coast of Africa. Um, because we believe that the time is there that in the future countries like Nigeria can play a major role in the automotive business. We believe that not only for us, but also for the Nigerian government as well, for the people. It is uh, um, um, a very positive, it would be a very positive thing. Everything we've been waiting for, and one of the stipulations was that we get the uh, green policy accented to by Mr. President. Uh, since then, we have come very far, and uh, we hope that very soon we will happen, and the review that KPMG has done. And we are very, very soon as well. Uh, we will continue uh, to do everything that we can to make sure we get the policy uh, sorted out and turned into law to give you the confidence that you require and uh, we hope we can move as soon as we got to go so that we can get to the end of the process. A review of national policy on MSMEs which seeks to solve challenges faced by micro, small and medium scale enterprises was launched by government in 2021 and is to span to 2025 towards achieving the implementation of the policy the micro small and medium enterprises development agency smedan has brought together the working group on implementation of the national msme's policy in a dialogue to brainstorm on how the policy can effectively deliver employment and wealth creation but most policies it's not as if they are not good when you look at the content but it is 
the implementation that's always been the problem. So we just decided that there's a need to have all the critical stakeholders within the MSM implementation framework to come together and have the ownership of all the recommendations of the national policy. We uh, ensure that we have uh, that um, a benefit drive from it to ensure that our MSMEs move to the next level. And the stocks the equities market closed Wednesday trading session on a positive note. The Air share index climbed 0.54% at 44,000 and 46.94 basis point. At a turnover of 159.4 million securities valued at 2.8 billion naira, were traded in 3,039 deals. Equity capitalization increased to 23.9 trillion naira. The financial services industry led the activity chart with Fidelity Bank, Guarantee Trust Holding Company, and Zenit Bank. That's business news. Fatima, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Musa. Uh, the threshold of conflicts among nations and communities comes to this good news for humanity the world over as a brand new international event or should i call it observance has been added to the list of numerous but significant observances and celebrations of the united nations it is called the international day of tolerance celebrated for the first time ever in Nigeria. It is a move to curb the rising cases of war and diverse crisis resulting in the destruction of lives and property. Mamsudimian Ati tells us more about the day. The only reason why a human being will take up a weapon to intentionally eliminate the life of another like him or her is simple lack of love and tolerance. This has caused humanity so much pain, so much sorrow, and so much destruction. However, it has become pertinent for this to stop so that humanity can enjoy some peace and sameness, hence the birth of the World Tolerance Day. This is for the first time in the world, the United Nations is coming up with what is called the Tolerance Day. As a matter of fact, it is also the first time we are doing it in Nigeria. And looking into what is going to happen in Nigeria come the election 2023, it need not to stomach violence or anger in your heart. If at any moment our friend will place, call my attention. Once you are able to see the other person as you see yourself, the world will be a peaceful place for all of us to cohabit. If you have kids, you have to start from the background. You bring them up to be tolerant of fellow citizens and to also be a good ambassador of the family. Peace is priceless. In your house, if you make peace, you enjoy the life. If you make peace in the public, you enjoy everything. The 17 SDG schools, the key aspect of it is peace. And if I can preach in my church, tolerance, peace, and love, my member will practice it outside. Imam, preach, peace, tolerance, and love. Their member will practice it outside. That means there will be no any riots. From diverse countries, races, tribes, and religion, these people are converged here at the Merit House of Puja to mark the World Tolerance Day in Nigeria for the first time. Whether you are Osa, whether you are Igbo, whether you are Yoruba, we are all one. At this point, it is my humble advice to all citizens of the world to practice tolerance. Please tolerance ensure that tolerance become part of our daily lives. The day will be marked 16th of November every year. Mamsu Damien Bati, NTN News. Thank you, Mamsu. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. Great to have you back on News Extra. Now, let's take sports update. The Nigeria Olympic Committee Wednesday in Abuja inaugurated its board of trustees with Habugumel charging them on working towards furtherance of the Olympics movement in the country. Their place is advisory in nature and to ensure that the NOC complies with the relevant laws, rules and regulations enforced in Nigeria as well as the Olympic Charter. There are several duties of a trustee. Some of them 
we of course have to ensure that their properties are in order and also to be honest in our judgment and in carrying out our duties. Ahead of Thursday's international friendly with Portugal in Lisbon, Nigerian ambassador to Portugal, Alex Kefas, has urged the Super Eagles to go for victory against their Portuguese counterparts. Ambassador Kefas gave the charge when he visited the training camp of the Super Eagles in Portugal. So, we produce our diplomatic relationship with Portugal from the years ago. So this is going to be a special match. Not only between Portugal but also for our country. The match will be the first senior meeting between the two countries. In the meantime, the Abuja chapter of the Nigerian Society of Engineers has emerged champions of the Nigerian Society of Engineers football competition for the fifth time after defeating their alluring counterparts in the final at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. Of course, to create awareness that uh, Nigerian engineers are not domicile just doing uh, uh, engineering designs and constructions, but we also involved in uh, games. The winners went home with 500,000 naira, while Apapa Branch pocketed 250,000 naira for their third place finish. Thank you so much to Kronosu for the sports package. And with that, we conclude News Extra for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fatima Wagoba. Please stay safe. <laughs>